Hello, good morning to everyone. Today we'll start about the arm, also known as brachium. This part is comparatively similar to the thigh in the world. Here, this part is situated between the shoulder joint and elbow joint. As the name suggests, brachium, most of the structures like muscles, arteries, nerves, every get name like brachium. Now, first we'll start from the surface landmark. This is the very small regions comparatively, and only the three muscles in front and one large muscle tricep on back. But another few important structures present in this region. So surface landmark greater tubercle of humerus greater tubercle humerus in the demonstration class you have learned here is the greater trochanter of humerus so this point you can feel in your body also it is situated most laterally then shaft of the humerus between the upper and lower end maximum part of the humerus is covered by the muscles medial epicondyles and lateral epicondyles this is medial epicondyles lateral humerus. both the epicondyles you can feel in your body in mid flex positions you can feel the better medial epicondyles and in extended positions you can feel the lateral epicondyles of humerus deltoid very large rounded contour of shoulder is due to the deltoid and deltoid is inserted into the mid of the shaft of numerous then comes coracobrachialis is situated on medially bicep brachii muscles most prominent structures in the front of arm it is the bicep brachii muscles at the elbow medial to the tendon of bicep brachii you can feel the pulsations it is brachial artery most commonly used for taking the blood pressures and comes ulnar now we can feel behind the medial epicondyles you can roll with your finger and bone and sometimes there is the very jerk or strike with the table A's, then we can feel the some tremor it is due to the ulnar now sensation superficial cubital veins in front of the elbow we can use for the iv injection as well as the another clinical process it is the superficial cubital veins becomes prominent when we clench the fist now anterior compartment of this regions known as flexor compartment also three muscles of this compartment coracobrachialis brachialis and bicep brachii coracobrachialis is comparatively weak and small muscles in this compartment as the name suggests its origin from coracoid process and insertion into the brachium that's why its name is coracobrachialis strip straight muscles it is comparable with the medial compartment of the thigh also like adductor compartment but here in the upper lip there is nothing like the adductor compartment separately that's why this muscles is somewhat like the adductor origin insertion of coracobrachialis then brachialis deep muscles on the surface of lower part of the shaft of the humerus entero laterally and entero medially there is the origin of the brachialis muscles and then this muscles is inserted into the ulnar tuberosity and rough anterior surface of coronary process of ulna bone so this is the one of the best flexor of the elbow 
bicep brachii muscles as the name suggests it's having a two head short head and long head this is short head this is sorry this is short head along with the coracobrachialis takes origin from the coracoid process and long head is takes origin from the supraglenoid tubercle intracapsularly is tendinous then this tendon like origin comes outside the joint and fuse with the short head of the bicep brachii then both the hand is fused and makes the bulky covering in front of the arm then this bulky bicep brachii muscles again converted into a tendon like and then this tendon is inserted onto the radial tuberosity and it's inserted on posterior rough part of the bone so these are the three muscles origin insertion all the three muscles are supplied by musculocutaneous nerves here in this you can see the musculocutaneous nerves branch of the brachial plexus is crosses from medial to lateral side then it runs between the two bones brachialis and bicep brachii brachialis also receives the additional nerves from the radial Now important changes take place at the coracobrachialis. So which are the important changes? Shape of the humerus is changed from round to triangular at this level. Hmm. Above this there is round bone, below this there is the triangular in shape. Medial and lateral intermuscular septa is well defined below this level. Three important muscles takes attachment on this level. They are the deltoid brachialis and medial head of the tricep. Deltoid, which covering the this shoulder regions, is inserted at this level. Coracobrachialis itself also inserted at this level. Brachialis takes origin below this level, and medial head of the tricep is also attached, but on posterior aspect of the humerus at this level. Brachial artery, so it crosses from medial to anterior aspect at this level. Profunda brachii artery also crosses from medial to lateral on posterior aspect of humerus in radial group. Superior ulnar collateral artery is pierced the medial intermuscular septum at this level, and nutrient artery supplies the bone also at this level. Vein, basilic vein also forms at this level and pierces the deep fascia. Two veins around the brachial artery is known as the vena comitans and forms the brachial vein at this level. Morphological importance of coracobrachialis. So coracobrachialis muscles is in lower animals is having a three head instead of the two head. But in human beings, it is simply an upper two head is fused with each other, and ultimately it takes origin from the coracoid process. And in between the these two head, there is the musculocutaneous nerve is piercing, and then muscle is inserted at the middle of the shaft of humerus. But sometimes its lower end is may persist. It's known as the ligament of toothus. It is abnormal. Now, important now of this compartment is musculocutaneous now. Musculocutaneous now, as the name suggests, it supplies the muscles of front of arm, namely the bicep brachii, coracobrachialis, and brachialis. Plus, below the elbow joint is become cutaneous. And supplies the skin on the lateral aspect of the forearm. That's why its name is musculocutaneous. It is similar to the superficial common peroneal nerve of the leg. Origin. So it takes from the lower part of brachial plexus, from the lateral cord of 
brachial plexus. Root value is C567. Course, so it passes from the lower part of axilla and it's along with the third part of axillary artery in this region. Anteriorly, it is covered by pectoralis major muscles. Posteriorly, it is supported by the subscapularis muscles. Medially, the artery and lateral root of the median nerve. Laterally, there is coracobrachialis muscles. And after that, it leaves the axilla and enter into the coraco front of arm by piercing the coracobrachialis muscles. And then it obliquely passes and makes the cutaneous nerves. Branches, the muscular branches for the three muscles, namely into the front of arm, they are coracobrachialis, biceps, and brachialis. Cutaneous. This gives the lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm and supplies the skin on lateral aspect of forearm. Articular branches, it supplies the joint. This is not arterial but articular branches. This is the articular branches and supplies the elbow joint. And communicating branches which communicate with the neighboring nerves. So this, has, this is about musculocutaneous. No. Now brachial artery. Everything is regarding the arm or brachium. That's why it is brachial artery. One of the important now in this compartment is continuations of the axillary artery. In case of the lower end, uh, lower limb, we have learned the femoral artery is continuous as a Popliteal artery here, the axillary artery is continuous as a brachial artery. Course runs downwards and laterally from the lower border of the teres major muscles and then it accompanies in the upper part of the arm. There is medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. In middle of the arm is crossed by the median nerve which crosses the artery and then seen into the middle of the front of elbow joint in cubital fossa. And then it's posteriorly supported by the tricep muscles, radial nerve and profunda brachii artery in the radial groove. And ultimately the brachial artery is terminate into the front of elbow into the radial and ulnar Medially in the upper part, there is ulnar nerves and basilic vein and in lower part, there is the median nerve. Laterally, it is related to coracobrachialis and biceps and then in lower part, there is the tendon of bicep at elbow. Now, branches of this brachial artery. So, there is profunda brachii, one of the largest branches. Then superior ulnar collateral artery makes anastomosis around the elbow joint, nutrient artery and inferior ulnar collateral artery and two terminal branches. So this is about the part of brachial artery. Anastomosis around the elbow, they are the max arterial circle <coughs> due to the branches of the profunda brachii, brachial and terminal branches of the ulnar and radial we will discuss later.